This video was created by Vinyl Lake Puma of Vinyl Lake Puma Gaming. So one of the biggest mysteries of the Fallout universe is what happened to the Enclave after the events of Fallout 3 and to a lesser extent, Fallout New Vegas. Are they still around? And if they are around, why haven't we seen them yet in any of the Fallout 4 DLC? While I can't speak for Bethesda Game Studios and what their DLC plans ultimately are, I do think that the Enclave is still around somewhere in the continental United States, as well as possibly in Alaska. Today, I'm going to present you guys with some evidence that is cross-referenced with our very own real-world timeline to give you an idea of just how likely it is that the Enclave still exists within the Fallout universe as of the conclusion of the events in Fallout 4, and that is both for whether you decide to destroy or side with the Institute. One more thing before you get into the bulk of this video, this video does contain some spoilers for the games, um, so you know you've been warned. Seeing as how Fallout 4 is the most recent iteration in the franchise, it's best that we start there to figure out whether the Enclave still exists during the events of Fallout 4. Um, for those of you that have played the Far Harbor DLC that released last month, you may have visited the Children of Adam on the island and encountered Grand Zealot Richter. Now, it just so happens that Zealot Richter is our only NPC in Fallout 4, and as of the making of this particular video, our only DLC character that was a former member of the Enclave. Um, according to Richter, he served with the Enclave in the capital region and says that the army he served with, quote, called themselves the Enclave. They were a force to be reckoned with in their day, but now... Well, it's been a long time since then. What's important about this is that it seems to imply that the Enclave has forces in several different regions within the former United States. Um, however, it's likely they are a shadow of their former selves, especially with the destruction of the oil rig in Fallout 2 and the beating they succumb to by the Brotherhood of Steel during the events of Fallout 3 and its DLC. Um, that said, it's only been 10 years since the events of Fallout 3, so it's very plausible that many former Enclave soldiers, scientists, and other personnel are wandering or control areas of post-Great War America in the year 2287. But let's go ahead and we'll talk more about pre-Great War America. Uh, so, in Fallout 4, we finally learn that the United States has divided into 13 commonwealths in the year 1969 of their timeline. Now, it's possible that the Enclave or one of its splinter groups could exist within one of these 13 commonwealths. Um, now, the vast majority of the main Fallout games take place in the Southwest Commonwealth, which consists of the southern part of California, uh, parts of Nevada, as well as Hawaii, although there's no games that take place in Hawaii. Now, obviously, this is where Fallout 1, Fallout 2, and New Vegas take place, which is in the Southwest Commonwealth. Now, Fallout 3 takes place in in the Columbia Commonwealth, which is where Washington, D.C., or a.k.a. the Capital Wasteland, and other areas like Point Lookout, Maryland, are located. Now, for Fallout 4, um, Fallout 4 takes place in the New England Commonwealth, which consists of Massachusetts and Maine, where both Boston and Far Harbor are both located. As of Fallout 4, there are currently six Commonwealths that haven't had a Fallout game or its DLC um, take place in that specific commonwealth. Uh, so for example, there's the East Central Commonwealth, which consists of Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee, the Gulf Commonwealth, which consists of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida, the Great Midwest Commonwealth, which consists of Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan, the Northern Commonwealth, which consists of Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, and South Dakota, the Plains Commonwealth, which consists of Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, Missouri, and Oklahoma, and finally, the Texas Commonwealth, which consists of both Texas and Arkansas. 
Now, this may or may not be canon, but the Fallout Bible was written by Chris Avalone. Now, for those of you that don't know who he is, uh, he worked on Fallout 2 and, interestingly, has also worked on Fallout New Vegas. Uh, now, the Fallout Bible seems to indicate that the former U.S. government groups, which possibly could have included the Enclave, retreated to various remote locations around the world as well as the continental U.S., uh, to survive nuclear war. Of course, as you can imagine, there are plenty of remote places within just these commonwealths that I previously mentioned that the Enclave could currently be located. Uh, certain areas of some of the states I listed are pretty remote, and according to uh, listosaur.com, uh, some of the most remote areas in the U.S. are places like Hinsdale County, Colorado, and the western part of Texas. Now, that said, there are some states that have very low populations, like Wyoming and North Dakota, which are relatively remote and safely out of range from the Brotherhood of Steel. Um, there's also, of course, Alaska, and there's a lot of oil in Alaska that certain pre-war corporations could have set up shop in. Something that I haven't seen a lot of people bring up is the Enclave's connection to Poseidon Energy. For those of you that don't know, Poseidon Energy was an international corporation that held significant control over the global energy market before the nuclear war that starts the Fallout franchise. Um, they also funded research and development for newer and more technologically advanced weapon systems, and one of those is actually Helios 1 from Fallout New Vegas. Um, now, this may explain why the Enclave initially had an edge over the Brotherhood of Steel in both Fallout 2 and Fallout 3 to a certain extent. I would go as far to say that Poseidon Energy and the Enclave may be intrinsically related. Um, it's worth pointing out that the trident in the Poseidon Energy logo is black and is in a kind of like centralized location, much like the Enclave's E is black and is centralized around 12 stars. Um, it's also important to mention that the control station Enclave oil rig that the player destroys in Fallout 2 was in fact built by Poseidon Energy. If you go towards the southeastern part of the map in Fallout 4 and pass through Quincy Ruins, you'll come upon a Poseidon Energy oil refinery. Now, while this area is currently populated by some raiders, it's possible that it may have been a strategic location for the Enclave at one point. In Fallout 2, you could visit Navarro, which was a location that had an old Poseidon oil refinery as well as an Enclave military base. It's possible that the Enclave may have had some kind of outpost in the Commonwealth at one time, but not anymore. This may actually explain why Exo-1 Power Armor appears in the Commonwealth, which, after all, was developed by the Enclave. It's plausible that Poseidon Energy, or oil, is the analog to our current timeline's ExxonMobil Corporation, which is said to have an influence on our current U.S. foreign policy. Um, it's also worth mentioning that ExxonMobil funds scholarships and provides funding for advanced energy science and technology research to be conducted by MIT. Now, it could be possible that Poseidon Energy in the Fallout universe funded the Institute while it was known as CIT, or the Commonwealth Institute of Technology. And this may explain why the X-01 Power Armor has a Power Armor paint that represents the Institute as its faction in Fallout 4. In fact, all of the standard Power Armor types have one. The T-45 is the Minutemen, T-51 is the Railroad, and of course T-60 is the Brotherhood of Steel. If the Enclave has another oil rig or outpost near an oil refinery, much like they did in Fallout 2 with the Poseidon Energy Oil Rig or uh, Control Station Enclave, and then of course the Navarro Outpost, it's possible they could have military bases located in either 
either Alaska in the Gulf of Mexico region, on the east coast of the United States, in the Pacific Northwest coast of the United States, and near or around the Great Lakes. Um, in our timeline, ExxonMobil currently operates in Alaska, and it's possible that Poseidon Energy may also have oil facilities located in Alaska as well, provided they weren't bombed out during the nuclear war. It's also important that we discuss ED-E, which is a possible iBot companion available in Fallout New Vegas and was developed by the Enclave at Adams Air Force Base during the events of Fallout 3. Now, ED-E was to be sent from Adams Air Force Base to Navarro. And this is interesting as shortly after the events of Fallout 2, which was roughly 40 years prior to the events of Fallout 3, both the NCR and Brotherhood destroyed the outpost at Navarro. Um, however, while ED-E was going to Navarro, ED-E stopped at an Enclave outpost located in Chicago. Um, as far as we know, this is the only mentioned Enclave base in the Fallout franchise we haven't been to and at least know that existed at one time. While it's almost guaranteed that there is an Enclave base somewhere in Chicago, I want to go back to Navarro for a minute. Um, what's so strange about sending an iBot to Navarro is that Augustus Autumn, who commanded the Enclave during Fallout 3, that guy was born on the Enclave oil rig that was destroyed in Fallout 2. Um, yet he didn't know that Navarro um, was destroyed. Um, now, keep in mind, this is 30 to 35 years before the events of Fallout 3, so it just seems like he would have had to have known about Navarro's destruction, because, I mean, his father rallied all of the troops in the Enclave together and basically brought them to the east coast of the United States. My theory is that since the destruction of the oil rig in Fallout 2, that many of the different branches of the pre-war government can no longer get in touch with each other. And this is evidenced by ED-E being sent to Navarro, despite the outpost being wiped out 30 to 35 years prior. Um, if they want to communicate with another outpost, they have to do so by actually sending soldiers there or sending an iBot as opposed to communicating via satellite or something. So I guess to sum up everything that I just talked about, it's very likely that the Enclave is located in Chicago, provided that they weren't wiped out by the Brotherhood of Steel during the 10 years that have occurred since the events of Fallout 3. Now, there's also a possibility that the Enclave could be located near Alaska thanks to their ties to Poseidon Energy or similar oil rigs and oil refineries throughout the continental United States. Otherwise, they could be hanging out in a very remote part of the United States, such as Wyoming, North Dakota, or areas of certain states like the western part of Texas. Overall, guys, I think the Enclave's chances of being around during the events of Fallout 4 and maybe possibly 50 years after are fairly likely. Anyway, guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. And as always, take care and I'll see you all next time.